Hi, this is Larry Hatch, and I want to introduce you to a new online encyclopedia of house plants, interior landscape plants, and tropical foliage plants. It's called Hatch's Interior Plants. And before you think I'm trying to sell you something, it's 100% free. You don't have to sign up, no credit card, no subscription, no nothing. Just go to cultivar.org, click on it. And it's theirs, it's yours. In fact, you can even download all the PDF files for free. No strings attached, no obligation, nothing more to do. It's all free in the public interest. And that's what we do at cultivar.org. We try to educate people and educate ourselves on new plants and the best old plants. I started uh, this project 25 years ago, so it's nothing new. Didn't just pull it out of fine air with a bunch of internet investor money didn't get a bunch of teenagers around a room to compile a database that has no substance behind it this is something that i started 25 years ago as a lover of house plants and interior plants as a horticulture student and now a professional taxonomist i wrote it to be the most complete guide to the varieties or cultivars of interior plants we're not getting too much into the species level work, but there's so many thousands of new cultivars of house plants, interior plants out there. I thought we needed to document those a little better and share that information. And I mean share. I'm not just telling you what's out there. Uh, we have readership for many years that have told us, hey, what about this new plant? You need to check this out. I just found this sport. Let me tell you about it. And over these 25 years, it's become the most complete guide to the varieties of indoor plants. Uh, Alfred B. Groff, who wrote Exotica, Tropica, and the Exotic Plant Manual, who many of you know, was famous for putting in hundreds of cultivars that people didn't know about and, putting, and publishing beautiful images of them. We're not going to try to do what he did, but we have the advantage of the internet and color photos today. Uh, so we're going to tell you about all the new stuff that we can and to just give you an example um, we have over 1600 I'm not kidding cultivars of coleus many of them illustrated and this is from our partners at the International Coleus Society so you're not going to find a guide any book with 1600 coleus in detail like you will here there's over 431 ivy or header varieties uh, we have over 189 syngoniums, for example, and hundreds more of these plants. Um, and it's not just, oh, here, here's a cool new plant. We have source links where you can buy them, uh, specialty websites where you can learn about them, uh, names of places that show them, you know, different gardens that have them. You can take a look at them. Uh, lots of different stuff. I think the first thing that people... Uh, have noticed about our encyclopedia here my encyclopedia but but it's a collective effort I'm just the editor really uh, is the quality of the photos we have better images and I I just got sick of plant websites with these little tiny thumbnails you can't see anything and then they started to get a little better but people were still using their cell phones Ugh, ugly so we set a standard that our images would be at least a thousand pixels wide and our new standard is 1250 pixels wide that's going to fill a laptop screen i use this on my 41 inch tv and believe me the images hold up you can blow up these images two or three times in most cases and uh, i think you're really going to like them uh, that's one thing from the very beginning I insisted on is high quality images and I think that's one of the hallmarks of this project that we only take good images uh, I invested in some good Nikon cameras and lenses a few years back uh, some of our partners who contributed to this have done so also uh, we use flatbed scanners because some plants you just can't photograph in three dimensions as well you need to scan them and we've really gone to a lot of effort to um, produce images that 
show you the plant more accurately and document it for the future. So please give us a look. We're exclusively at cultivar.org and you just click on the Hatches Interior Plants logo and you're right there. Nothing more to do. It's, it's, it's a simple free database and encyclopedia. So thanks for giving us a try. If you want to hang on for a few more minutes, um, I'll go into some more detail about the project. Thank you. Well, thanks for staying on a little bit. I just want to go over some unique things about uh, this uh, Encyclopedia Hatches Interior Plants, or we call it HIP. Um, more than um, a few years ago, something came out called the iPhone. And soon we had portable phones and tablets and portable ebook readers even before the iPhone, actually. Uh, we had laptop computers. Well, I wanted my encyclopedia not just to be an internet thing, but to be something you can carry with you in your hand, not just looking up the internet, but actually having the PDF files on the device, whether it's your phone, on a SIM card, uh, laptop, um, tablet, whatever, and that's what I do to this day. Uh, you can download any of our PDF files. Uh, might take you a while, there's about 20 of them, but they're anywhere between about um, 9 uh, megabytes and about 89 megabytes so if you want the whole set you might you might need a new card but I think most most new devices can accommodate that I have some pictures here uh, uh, of showing a uh, fairly old phone I think um, uh, what it looks like to have these pictures and the entire cyclopedia in your pocket so if you're in a greenhouse somewhere or in an arboretum or a botanical garden somewhere, a nursery, um, your classroom, your client's office, you have all this data with you and you don't have to go looking it up on the internet. It's all there. You keep it in your file folders and um, that's what we really, really want you to do. So uh, it's portable on any device that will read a PDF file. So we encourage you to do that. Um, another thing different about the HIP system is that we respect history. Um, I'm a cultivar historian, that's one of my hobbies and as part of being a taxonomist. So I like to know when a cultivar originated, who created it, who introduced it, usually a nursery if it's different than the creator. Uh, what, what did it look like? Because a lot of times what we have today doesn't match what the original plant was. Uh, they get they get corrupted by producing them from seed or sports or um, just getting mixed up in the trade. So we like to go back to old nursery catalogs and look at the old cultivars and I've got a few samples here of how we do that. Uh, we also find cultivars that seem to be lost. We like to mention those. Um, so that's another thing about our system. We go back to history. We go back literally to the 1500s when a lot of these tropical plants were starting to be introduced and uh, cultivated in Europe and Asia primarily. Uh, another thing we do is we look at old plates from old books. Again, we are try to determine is the plant we have today under this name the same as it used to be? And that's an interesting thing to study. We also look at plant patents and study those religiously. Uh, although a lot of new houseplants are patented, the vast majority are not. So just going to a patent database, and there's about 10 of them now, um, uh, that's really not enough. And plus the US one doesn't have colored pictures. You gotta go somewhere else for that. Uh, another feature of HIP that, that I think is a little different is we are affiliate of the OROC system the open registration of cultivars. Back in 2014, a number of professionals were concerned that thousands of new cultivars were coming out. Not just trees, shrubs, conifers, um, perennials, houseplants, you name it. And they were not being registered by anybody. Uh, somebody did perennials for a time. Uh, obviously people do begonias and gizneriads and aeroids. We're not gonna mess with that. But the majority of foliage plants um, that are non aeroids nothing. N nobody's keeping track of that stuff. So we decided with the OROC project we would do that. 
and we have trained people, not just taxonomists, but designers, plant breeders, geneticists, uh, cultivar evaluation experts, all people from different affiliations and backgrounds working with us. And if you have a new cultivar, you can register it with us. It'll be published in our register. And here's a sample of what it looked like today, the end of it anyway. It's kind of long. Uh, of how we are documenting these cultivars. We're documenting them with scans, with photos, very good descriptions. We're making sure all the nomenclature is correct. You know, a lot of these plants have Latin names, you know. So-and-so plantis vulgaris uh, elbow variegata maculata. Well, if they weren't published before 1959, all that stuff is invalid. And so they deserve new names. The plants deserve new, new correct names, so we're doing that as well. And again, we're trying to document stuff for the future. Uh, so somebody could say, hey, what is that? Uh, sometimes people in Europe or Japan will say, no, 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 that's not the plant we have under that name. So we get together and sort things out, see who has the original one, and uh, maybe rename some of the other ones if they're important. So anyway, we have a cult of our registration process, which adds stability and uh, long-term historical documentation of these cultivars um, for our future, really. Um, and you can cite this publication uh, like any book, and we can tell you how to do that as well. But um, digital publications are the future because of the huge volume of material, and uh, this is how we're going with cultivar registrations, and they're free to anybody. Again, you don't even have to sign up, no subscription, no credit card, no nothing, just want it. Uh, again, if you want to download all the PDF files, and I encourage that really because it's a lot faster way to load the data, um, it will take you a little bit of time. But again, when was the last time somebody gave you a free thousand page book, right? Um, so it's worth the effort anyway. And again, we want to hear from you because you guys are the experts. My, my knowledge is just, you know, sliver thin, and so we want you guys to, um, to um, work with that. Uh, one of the other things we do is we do what we call flatbed scans. Uh, we put a plant in a design type scanner, you know, sort of like a fancy photocopier, and that way we get a live material with all the color intact, the texture intact. We call it a live herbarium. Um, I started doing that 25 years ago when people thought I was crazy cramming plants into a scanner. Uh, but it works, and we've done it hundreds of times, and it helps document the plants to a much higher degree. And uh, again, they have fresh color, uh, textures are all correct, uh, and the backgrounds and so on. So this scanning technology, it's not new. But it's something you may not have seen before, and it helps us with the long-term documentation of these beautiful, wonderful plants that deserve to be known, deserve to have a correct name, deserve to be registered, and deserve to be grown by all of us. So again, thanks for your time, and give us a look. We want to hear from you so we can do better, and if you have something to share, uh, please do. Thanks.